It's surprising how often I get asked about holes. People just have a problem visualizing or wrapping their minds around how do you cast an object that has holes in it, either very deep holes or through holes. Holes as far as the eye can see. Holes everywhere, nothing but holes. Let's make a mold and see if we can't cast this thing. How in the world do you make a mold like that? Break out the oil clay. So I just form up a cookie or a potato chip, <laughs> whichever you like, and just press it on there. Trick is not to press it too hard, just trying to block them and seal them. This is looking really good. I just took my potato chip of clay and pressed it inside across each one of those holes. Now you don't want to push so hard that the clay starts coming up into the other piece. You don't need that. It just needs to make a tight seal around each one of those holes. So now let's get this poured. Mix up the rubber. Get this rubber nicely mixed. It's just a small amount. We don't need a lot, we're just filling the well. The hardest parts of this mold to fill are those little holes down in the bottom. And I uh, should be able to lay a nice thin bead of rubber on there. Okay, so what we have effectively done is to turn a spoked wheel into a solid wheel. Now, from this point forward, it's gonna be reasonably easy to cast those parts. The next tricky part are how do we deal with the holes? These bitty, bitty, itty, bitty, tiny holes. They're very shallow, but they're tiny. And uh, we're gonna to have to figure out how we're gonna deal with those next. Remove these a little leveling feet, then carefully pry off the clay cookie. I got all the rubber parting lines neatly cleaned up, as you can see. And I sculpted up kind of a hybrid funnel out of wax and some oil clay. So now what we want to do is weld the funnel exactly where we want it. I want it just on the edge, the leading edge of that part. And I want to stick it on there strong enough that this wax funnel will support the part during the pour. I'm just melting in the sticky wax into the sculpting wax because the sticky wax bonds really well to the part and it's strong. Give it the maximum holding power. We can think about the lone single vent that we're going to put on this piece. You always want your vent to come up to the top of the funnel. You don't want it coming in anywhere below in the funnel because obviously it's, it needs to rise the air all the way out of the part, including the funnel part. Before I pour the rubber, I want to talk about this little piece. The first thing I want to demonstrate is this piece has a really deep hole. Let's see, it's about that deep. This is a really difficult problem to solve. The other issue we have in this is a through hole. Through holes are a problem. Deep holes are a problem. And you just have to have a different strategy for dealing with the different kinds of holes. Break out the old fresh and natural baby spinach box. And what's in it? Are mold cases. These are just pieces of bent styrene that I hoard and uh, they go together something like this. Put this on there like that and like this. Not like that. I'll just tack them together here. Show you how this works. There, like that. Now this system is not the highest precision system in the world but it works. So now the trick is to get it reasonably square and tightly sealed so that it doesn't leak. Before we can mount this thing in the case, we need to break out the spray release just using the old MR150 parting agent spray release. And let's put it on there. Light coat from this angle. I pulled it over the paper because I don't want to get release on the bottom side of that. I just really want the release on the rubber. I'm just coming at it from different, slightly different angles to make sure I get a nice coat. All right. Remember all those little teeny tiny holes all around the rim? It's almost impossible to get the rubber to go into those holes. It's just, they're just, some might go, some won't. It's just gonna be a hodgepodge. So I'm gonna do something that I just don't like doing and rarely do, and that is I'm gonna vacuum the model while I pour the rubber. And uh, we should be able to take all of the air out of those little bitty tiny holes. So I'm gonna put on a liberal coat of sticky wax Vacking or pressuring a model is a risky business. 
because I could be trapping air under that base. And the last thing I want to do is make a seal all the way around. I'm just going to tack it. If I completely seal it all the way around and there's air trapped in there, when I subject it to the vacuum, it's just going to pop it right off. Um, and that's the problem. If you subject a model like this or any model to vacuum or pressure, you better know how it's made. You better know that there's no air voids whatsoever inside. You're either going to explode your model or you're going to crush your model. And uh, how do I know these things? Because it happened to me. Early in my career, I destroyed a model, a, a very precious little ship model. And uh, never again will I do that. So here I am doing it, breaking all my own rules, as usual. Let's put this case together, and we're going to glue it together with the same rubber that it, we cast it with. That way, everything will be nice and compatible. And we won't have any problemos. By using rubber like this as a sealant, you know the mold's gonna come apart well, and you know everything's gonna be compatible, and you know you're not gonna have any problems. And if you're careful at this stage, you're gonna make a mold that can't leak. Okay, this mold case is sealed and dried and hardened and beautiful, and it's ready to pour. Okay, we're gonna fill this mold quickly, pouring from the bottom up. But I'm not gonna worry as much about draping as I normally do, because remember, we're gonna first pour it, fill this mold up, and then we're gonna vac it. We're gonna post vac the rubber. It's already been vacked once, so the bulk of the air is out of it. See how much rubber it's gonna take to fill this box. Now, I just want to fill it just to the top of the part right now because I want some room for expansion in case there is any in this mold box. Let's get this in the pot. But we are definitely pulling air out of the model. Oh yeah, look at all that air come out of there. Remember that rubber was first, was, had already been de-aired once. Oh yeah. Wow, look at those bubbles coming out of there. It's pretty impressive. That seems like an awful lot of air coming out of that, those little tiny holes. We've got to top it off, uh, and then we'll let it sit and cure till tomorrow. It's all nicely cured up. Let's pull it apart. This is why we love plastic. It just peels right off. Not a worry in the world. There you go. All right. All right, let's grab a pair of scissors. All right, that's clean enough. Okay, let's cut our holy wheel here. If I can, I'll see if I can break this funnel off. Yeah, sounds like it. Sounds like it'll come off. And it, yeah, it did. See, I'm making jaggies, but I'm not making these crazy jaggies. This closes up better, and it locks the mold together perfectly well. Remember that the key to cutting rubber is stretching it. It's hard to cut until you stretch it, and then it cuts easily. It's very, very, very hard to cut a parting line down the perfectly down the edge of a form. Let's take a look here, see if we can't pop this out now. Look at the tiny little holes on both sides of the mold. Look at that ring of holes. So that vacuum method worked really well on this particular mold. I never know how my models are made. This, you know, I'm reasonably certain is solid without fill. It's just a solid hunk of plastic, but it might, Lots of times your model's gonna have holes, and hidden holes and voids inside of them. And if it does, and you put them under vacuum or you put them under pressure, you are gonna destroy the model and you're gonna make a mold of a destroyed model. This, turns out, just came out perfectly. All right, let's get this mold cut open. The vent and the funnel, the sprues, tell you where to cut. They're your guide. That's why you're not cutting blind. See that bridge of rubber that's passing through the hole? You've got to cut that right in the middle, right there in the center. So let me do that. I'm even trying to cut some jaggies into that hole so that the two halves of the tunnel piece will kind of lock together. There we go. Now that it's cut free, 
we can let go of it. Deep holes like this leave a long, thin piece of rubber that will sag under its own weight. It, it, it may not stay in position. It may not be a straight hole. With each casting, the resin is going to grip harder and harder and harder on that. And one of the, it, was, it won't take too many castings before this piece of rubber just tears off. These are just better to avoid entirely. If you look on the other side of the mold, right there, there's a divot. That bump becomes a divot in the casting, and that tells you exactly where to drill this hole. Okay, I got both molds ready to go. Here they are. And as you can see, I've got this one set up nice and purdy and uh, lots and lots of thin rubber bands for nice even pressure. Invisible parting lines, which is how I like them. These wood cleats here transfer some of the pressure to the middle of the mold and take the pressure off the corners so you don't get quite as much mold distortion. So that's the point to that. It's all set up. This little stand allows me to tip this, holds it while I pour it at an angle. And this is the other mold. It too is uh, ready to go. We'll pour them both. I mixed up a 40 batch of quick cast and it lives up to its name. So we shall not dilly dally about. Here we go. This should pour it in a straightforward pour. No problems. I want to see if I get that air bubble out of there. Okay, got some bubbles out. All right, shaking it all around. Let's pour this one. It rose up perfectly right up to the top. They look good. Let's tank them up. Run those dogs over to the tank. Quick check of the witness cup. All right, sounds good. Let's pull them. Close the in valve. Open the out valve. And away we go. Looking good. This should be fine. Watch it. Well, that failed. Can you see that, that hole being formed by that tube? Now see, it's popping right out. But the danger is with each successive casting, this tube gets more and more wear and the resin grips harder and harder to it. And one of these times it's just going to rip out. The other one's looking good. Let's pull it out. You can see some flash down inside the through hole, but that's not going to matter. You can also see the divot where you should drill the hole. So the best way to do this hole is to fill it in the model, drill it in the casting. Doing it this way means that eventually that's going to break off and you're just going to have to drill it anyway. Let's see how we did. Backside looks pretty good. I think pretty good. How flexible is it? Oh, that's pretty rigid. Let's try to pull it. There we go. That pulled out nice. Pulled out nice. Backside looks good. How do we do? Rats, we caught one little bubble. One little bubble right there. Thought I would have gotten that one. Very easy to repair that bubble. It's in a good spot. Nice and easy to repair. Otherwise, boy, I'm going to say that thing is darn near perfect. Look at the parting line. Look at the parting line. I want to show you something. And here I took some macro photos. This part had been previously cast. And this is how I know that. You can see the vent and sprue and parting lines on the casting. I'm not pointing this out to embarrass anybody because basically he's got the right idea. He did a cut mold. I wouldn't use three holes. You only needed two. He should have located the holes right on the edge and then tipped the model so that all the air ran out. You can see that he had some problems, but I just want to point out to you that a cut mold is not a panacea. You still have to use good technique. And here it's okay, but it's, it's not optimal. So you see his parting lines and artifacts. And there's my sprue inlet and parting line. See that parting line? Now look at this parting line. That's just technique. It makes a big difference. Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next. I hope you had some fun. I hope you learned something. And I will see you next week.